Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we are going to be continuing with Schneider Electric. As you see, you can see behind it, that is Schneider Electric ATV12 drive, that what I would class as entry level drive from their ATV family and nevertheless we are going to be doing three videos on it. So the first video is going to be all about commissioning and running in a local mode. Second video is all going to be exploring uh, more uh, parameters and running two, three wire controls and using potentiometer. And in the third video, this drive does not have the MOP control or a uh, button, uh, two button speed uh, up down speed control. So we are going to be doing a uh, multi frequency setup, how the multi frequency works, and also we're going to be talking about uh, what is switching frequency, how that works in the drive, and how what sort of effect does it give to the drive if you adjust it, especially when it comes down to the noise. So definitely check out our third video where you'll be able to find out a bit more what that is. So before we get started, as usual guys, all the parts that we are going to be using in this video, uh, in this video, on all any other videos that we do, you are able to find them, I find it on our website if you wish to have a look at it and possibly purchase it, uh, whichever way that is. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, wiring is done. Let's have a look at the, how the uh, all the wiring, uh, all the control points are, and things like that. So the right here on the top is where, the, where your phase in the neutral goes. So line in here, neutral in there, and also earth in there. Right in here on the bottom, the uh, T1, T2, T3, or U, V, W are going directly straight to the motor, and the motor is right here, right next to it. By the way, we got a new one. Uh, the next is our terminals. These are all your outputs that can be configured. We might look at it in the upcoming videos. Uh, in here, this is where your analog inputs are, and in here, where you are able to have your uh, digital inputs. And Schneider was, uh, even though it's very sky kind of scaled down drive, Schneider has given us generous four inputs. That means we can do quite a bit with it. So, uh, regarding a, a front uh, keypad, in here we got the mode button, more or less it's used. If you hold down, you can go, as you can see, it just popped up local. So in here, let's say, uh, we show, show that and this is pretty much where you we were able to control the frequency and then start and stop, pretty much able to control everything from uh, front keypad. So we're holding it back down, but you can't edit in any uh, um, uh, parameters. So you have to be in, I don't know why, in remote mode to do that. So so uh, I'll talk, we'll talk about that in a minute. And obviously we've got escape button self-explanatory escape and then we have a start stop and uh, obviously the reset in here and this little dial in here is called jog button uh, jog wheel not button and uh, where we are going to be playing with all of our a uh, uh, parameters and obviously every time you want to go in the parameter you want to do click the middle and you pretty much go through everything that is in there so which we are going to be talking about in a minute and clicking escape it returns you back to the uh, front screen. Even though this button in here, I don't really understand because you, you, you can't set, set the in, in the settings that you don't have to jump by using this button from one or another, which I'm going to show that in a minute where that's done. But if you don't want to do it, so yeah, this button is quite, uh, quite handy too if you want to jump from a remote to a local control. So that's done with the front keypad and uh, wiring. Let's get to drive commissioning. And for the drive commissioning, we need to go to menu called DRC. I just figured out what else the what else is mode button does. If you if you go in the menu, you can sort of flip through the menus in here, which which the dial can do. I'm not well, yeah, dial can do the same thing. And plus, if you are in some menus, let's say in uh, full and blah, blah blah, it will get you back to the first config, which is. Eh, might be handy, might not, but I can't see much of a point of it. So anyway, we go in and configs, then we go down to the full, and then we go to the parameter group called a DRC, and this is where all the pretty much motor parameters start. And the first one uh, is a uh, watt motor rated uh, uh, stand standard motor frequency, which in here in UK is 50 hertz, and that's already in there. So the next one, oh, jumped out, which is the MPR, which is the power, which again you can find in your motor data plate. My one has been changed to 0.18 kilowatt. That's in there already because it is 0.18 kilowatt drive. 
and the next one is the cost sign which is the power factor sign which not all the all the drives are requesting but we're gonna edit it anyway just because so oh actually i'm lying on this drive it doesn't have it, it looks like it doesn't it went straight to a uns okay I mean, there is no cost sign so in here we check our motorated voltage which is 230 volts and the next one, now I need to check what is the next one, C NCR is a motor rated current, this is exactly what is in on the motor, the motor data play, and my one is 1.3 uh, of an amp, uh, yeah that's probably, yeah that's, that's probably what it is, 1 point, I'll put it at uh, 1.1, yeah that will do. So that's exactly what I have on my motor. And the next one is FRS is the rated motor frequency, which is uh, where we're going to be running the, how we're going to be up, up to what uh, frequency we are going to be running the drive. And obviously you can set this higher than uh, 50, but this, my motor is rated at 50. Uh, not here. And my motor is rated at 50 and I will leave it at 50. And that's about, that's what we're going to do there. Uh, the next one is a motor rated speed. I'm not sure this has got and in here you can set up the RPM so pretty much the frequency uh, if you do this here the frequency in uh, and um, uh, torque and things like that when we can do the auto tune will be much more uh, related to each other it will be, be able to control it better so uh, I usually like to put that you don't have to but I always like to put that and my one is 1395 1395 that's not we didn't make much change didn't we again oh where were we uh on that one now so uh control type this is where we pretty much could uh, uh, uh go into control type without complicating the situation we're just going to stay on the standard motor which is the standard don't need to change that unless there's some specific applications you want to do but for that I, I strongly suggest to read the manual and see what those things does because they sort of explains is that it is the performance it's the standard and then and, 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 and there's another one for the pumps and depending what are you using it for we are going to keep it as standard uh, the next one is UFR which we are not going to touch slip compensation we don't need to touch that either frequency loop stability we don't need to do that and then uh, that one, that one, don't need to do that one as well. So flux profile, don't need to do that either. The next one is uh, where we're going to get to is a uh, motor noise reduction. And that's this one. Uh, we are going to be getting into this probably in the third video. We're going to have a look at it. We're uh, going to talk a little bit about fr switching frequency. What is the switching frequency within the drive? So we sort of explain how to reduce the noise and control the noise. More importantly, control the noise of the actual... Um, uh, motor which is actually quite, quite a good stuff but there's quite a bit to talk about so we're not going to be do, uh, do that today we just leave everything as a standard so uh having done that the next one is a tune so this is where we're going to be performing the tune and to do the tune all we need to do is select yes there we go tune's done by clicking again it will tell you that it's been done and there we go ladies and gentlemen your drive it is fully up and running and ready to go the only thing is left now is to actually try it out and before we're gonna start uh, get to, get to try out the motor and uh, the things like that i quickly show you the parameters that were set at the very beginning where you can stay in a, a remote so more in a remote mode have full access to this and that and uh, just an example you can uh, do that by uh, selecting one of the parameters which is, uh, allow you to control the drive the motor from uh, front keypad well the drive uh, from the front keypad to do that if you go to the prompt configuration full and then go to a thing called CTL. In the CTL, if you can see the uh, frequency one, and in there is a uh, several frequencies in there which you can find what they are in the manual. And A1 U1 will allow you to control the drive, uh, the drive or the motor, whichever you want to say, uh, from front keypad without changing the modes. So uh, by saving that, okay, remember to save everything. Just keep clicking the middle button. When you exit now, as you can see, now it's going to allow me to a uh, control uh, the motor from uh, from keypad as you can see I got zero frequency and to get frequency you have to look click that click again and then you can start changing and in here 
it measures things in a percentage rather than actually frequency. So I'll throw a pointer out. So just in case if you want to do that, but I don't know why you want to do that because I'm going to show you the method where you don't have to do all this malarkey. So uh, uh, to if you call this button mode, and you can see it just said I jumped in local mode and what it did as well in local mode, once it, do, it does that, it removes the parameter you just FR1, they say which one you have changed. It was just being recon reconfigured back to terminals automatically. So from here, which you would normally want to run your uh, from uh, 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 for uh, local control, you basically by clicking start run button. And in here you don't even have to enter anything from there pretty much. You can't change any parameters from this mode you quickly it stops see you can't change any parameters in here everything in here is just frequency it's basically just frequency and start stop button and escape that's all that is kind of mode obviously all the buttons still work but it's just you won't be able to edit the the drive itself and drive parameters and if you remove that little cover in here your drive now has become fully locally controlled and to demonstrate one more time here's your start you want a bit more frequency but less if you do uh, drive the drive from a uh, local mode make sure you use something uh, where's the something like that for the e-stop mode so you can there's a way for you to disconnect the drive quickly uh, from the motor so uh, in the event of emergency that's just uh, something I always suggest to everybody to do have the emergencies always have some form of safety whatever you do so and there we go it runs, it runs very smoothly and we are able to get it this quite a lot but quieter by using the switching frequency but that's a subject for, for another day so for today that should be enough for us uh, to with the, within this video we've covered the drive what we need to cover which is a local mode and commissioning and plus we did the auto tune hopefully all of this is Get in there. All of this is making sense and helping you out to get your drive uh, up and running and, and pretty much in a uh, good running mode. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you liked the video, please smash that like. If you didn't, smash the dislike. Uh, comment below. Ask any questions as much uh, as, as much as you want, and I will answer them as accurate as, as I possibly uh, can. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.